Okay, Mayor, so you are live now. I know we're still two minutes to go, but you are live. Uh, Nina, again, members of uh, council, the clerk indicates to me that we have a about a minute to go before I officially bring this council meeting to order. Okay, uh, members of council, the uh, clerk advises me that it is now seven o'clock. So I'll bring this council meeting to, uh, to order on this date, uh, February the 8th, 2021. And uh, with that, if members of council would join me in a moment of silent reflection and then our national anthem. Thank you uh, very much for that. Uh, there and again, um, in just a moment, I'm going to go to the uh, clerk under agenda announcement. There's a number of them uh, this evening there as well. So and the clerk will be helping me as we go through uh, the agenda this evening. Just in case there's any uh, member of council that needs any clarification after the clerk goes through the uh, through the amendments and the announcements there, we'll uh, do that as well. So. Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you. So uh, a few announcements for tonight's meeting. Uh, later on in the agenda, we'll have two statutory public meetings under the Planning Act scheduled for uh, the first, a proposed common element plan of condominium by condominium by Madame Brown Ridge Limited, Madame Martin East Phase 1 for lands known as 980 Logan Drive. The second being an official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment by Village Developments Inc. and Ornella Group Inc. for lands municipally known as 180 and 194 Bronte Street South. During the course of the live meeting, members of the public who wish to speak on one of these public meetings can connect via phone by dialing the dedicated number 1-866-511-0021 or they can email town clerk 
at Milton.ca. They'll be given step-by-step -step instructions on how to enter and participate in the meeting via phone. Staff will work to assist each of the callers for, this pub for these public meetings and will start and end each of the calls in order they're received. These instructions will be provided again at a later point in the agenda um, when we will be holding the public meetings. Information about how to connect will be scrolling across the live stream video. The second announcement um, is with respect to the revised consolidated agenda for tonight's meeting, which was posted on the town website and distributed on Friday, February 5th, which included a revision to bylaw 6, 2021, and the addition of two delegations. With respect to the We Make Milton visioning report, we've received delegation registrations before the registration deadline from Kim Bradshaw on behalf of Sustainable Milton and Wendy Roberts on behalf of the Italian Cultural Center of Milton. We've been advised that Soha Nagar will be speaking instead of Kim Bradshaw on behalf of Sustainable Milton. After the delegation registration deadline, we received a delegation request from Usama Sayed on behalf of the Muslim Association of Milton to delegate with respect to the We Make Milton visioning report. We will need a resolution from council to add this name to the agenda under item two in the delegation section of the agenda. And I have spoken with the mayor. Would you like to deal with this now, mayor? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. I think before we deal with the, some of the amendments uh, there, I think I should uh, find out if there's any disclosure by any member of uh, council before we get into any of that. So is any member of council any disclosures that he or she uh, has this evening with regards to the agenda? I'm not seeing any. So, and again, uh, is there any uh, questions of clarification of the uh, clerk on uh, what was just read out by her with regards to the uh, revised agenda? I'm not seeing any clarification that's uh, needed. Might also make mention for the public uh, that uh, myself, the uh, the clerk, and the CEO is in the uh, council chambers, socially uh, distanced uh, as well there. So, and again, the clerk is going to be assisting me getting through this portion of the uh, the agenda because it's critical that do, that we do it right and uh, professionally as well. So, I do have a uh, resolution. It's moved by Councillor Hamid and second by Councillor Di Lorenzo and be it resolved that the pertinent rules contained in procedure bylaw 007-2019 as amended be waived to permit Usama Sayed Muslim Association of Milton to speak a maximum of five minutes speaking time with respect to staff report DS-005-21. And you heard the, uh, the clerk allude to that in her overview. Are there any questions with regards to this resolution? If not, unless I see a hand go up there in opposition, I will assume that it's uh, carried. Anyone in opposition? Seeing no one's hand go up, so that is carried. And uh, that is uh, acknowledged by the uh, the clerk. And uh, the next one, Madam Clerk, uh, a resolution moved by Councillor Chandler and second by Councillor Malibu. And be it resolved, whereas section 6.4 of the town's procedure bylaw 007-2019 provides that an item of business not listed on the agenda is not permitted to be introduced at a meeting unless authorized by two thirds vote of members present. Whereas procedure bylaw 007-2019 provides that notice of motion shall not be discussed or debated upon introduction, but shall be included on the next regular council meeting agenda for consideration. And whereas section 7.9.3 of the Town of Milton procedure bylaw 007-2019 as amended permits a notice of motion to be considered upon its introduction by an affirmative vote of two thirds of the members present. And whereas it is deemed impractical or not in the best interest of the town of Milton to delay consideration. Therefore, be it resolved that the pertinent rules contained in section 6.4 and section 7.9 of procedure bylaw 007-2019 be waived to permit the introduction and consideration by council 
of the notice of motion of the council on the council agenda pertaining to a highway 401 widening, widening noise barrier uh, meeting. And again, as mentioned in the resolution, we'll need two thirds uh, vote on uh, that and Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, if I can provide some clarification on that, thank you. Um, so we did receive two additional uh, motions for council's consideration. So the first um, that was read by the mayor um, is to waive the rules of procedure to add um, to the agenda, a notice of motion from Councilor Challoner with respect to the Highway 401 noise barrier meeting request. So if this motion uh, to waive the rules of procedure is approved by two thirds uh, vote as the mayor stated, um, this motion would be um, added to the agenda under items for consideration number five. So just to provide clarity. So the mayor has read out that first motion, which is to waive the rules of procedure to first add this item to the agenda and then to deal with it all in one meeting. That uh, clarification. So members of council, really what we're voting on now, just a waiving of the rules and we will need two thirds there. So I guess in this instance, Madam Clerk, I am going to ask that the uh, council raise their hands like this if they're in favor of waiving the uh, motion. So please raise your hand, those in favor of waiving the motion. Madam Clerk, if you could uh, take the, uh, the count, please. That's carried. That's carried. So we do have two thirds. So that will be dealt with under item number five, under items for consideration. So that uh, did take care of that. So thank you very much, uh, members of council for that. I have a resolution moved by Councillor Hamid and second by Councillor Cluett and be it resolved that consent items numbers one to four be approved. Is there any one of those consent items that any member of council wish pulled out and dealt with separately? Madam Clerk, I'm not seeing a hand go up there that any member wants any one of these items pulled out to be dealt with separately. So, uh, and again, on the assumption, no one wants any of them pulled out. Unless I see a hand go up, I will assume that everyone is in favor of that uh, item, uh, that resolve. Don't see any hands going up, so that is carried. The, uh, the first delegation uh, under delegations is uh, items for consideration number two. And this makes reference to site specific exemption to the interim control bylaw 082-2020 for 244 Bell Street. And uh, I'm not sure Madam Clerk, if this is to be introduced by any member of uh, staff or just going right to the, uh, to the delegation. And the uh, delegation is Jeff, Jensen, owner of 244 Bell Street. Uh, Nina, if you could bring Mr. Uh, Jensen on, please. And again, as uh, usual, he has five minutes for, uh, for his presentation. Mr. Jensen. Yeah, thank you, welcome. Mayor. So Jeff, I've promoted you over. You just have to unmute and turn on your video. Mr. Jensen. There, okay. Uh, Hello, I'm there. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cr Mr. Mayor Kranz and council members. Um, yes, thank clear. you, Mr. Jensen. We can we can hear you coming across Great. loud and clear. Thank you. Welcome. Great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am just want to be clear. I am not the owner. I'm the representative agent for the owners. All right. Um, this little new process to us as well. This interim bylaw in front of council. So we put forth a proposal in front of council. Um, hoping to allow us to go to the next step in this process, which is Committee of Adjustment Minor Variance. Um, based on the proposal, as you can see the lot, it's very wide towards Bell Street. It tapers off to a pie to the rear. It um, created some difficulties in design. Uh, with the design process, uh, the existing building to the left is being maintained. 
Um, it has a lot of sloped ceilings. Uh, we want to keep the integrity of the main body of the house. Uh, the addition proposed is the attached garage with ground floor living space behind, uh, kitchen great room, with additional bedrooms above. Um, it's two families being joined together, um, a, a couple that have um, four children all together, which are all going to reside in the home. Hence the reason for the addition and the additional bedrooms over the garage. Um, in the proposal, it, the challenge we had was we wanted to maintain as many vegetation um, trees in the rear yard, which we've been able to do that with the future pool to accommodate their needs. As well in the front yard, the trees to the left is also being maintained in front of the existing property. The only tree that's going to be removed on this property will be the one in the driveway for the new proposed garage addition, where it comes out onto Bell Street. Uh, we are asking for council approval to um, go in front of Committee of Adjustment for an increased lot coverage. A total lot coverage increase uh, we're looking for is 8.69%, which uh, allowable is 28%. We're asking for 28.69. Out of the 8.69, um, there is... 2.59% is porch and 6.1% is house. Based on the current design proposed, all the setbacks in height, all are within the actually new proposed RLD bylaw. So we worked in conjunction with the new bylaw that's put forth in the character area, as well worked with town planners on the design concept to obtain their approval as well. I hope that helps. <laughs> And I uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, members of council, are there any questions of Mr. Jansen in his presentation? I'm not seeing any, uh, Jeff. I thank you uh, very much. But it's my understanding, uh, Councillor Best, that you have a question of uh, staff on this uh, request. Councillor Best, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Worship. I think, <clears throat> thank you, Jeff, for the presentation. Uh, to uh, planning staff, when do you expect to have the report back for the uh, finalization of the character uh, study in terms of this neighborhood? I know we did the first phase of it, but uh, I know there's a number of applications in the uh, waiting list right now, and uh, they're quite concerned about this. So I'd like to make sure that uh, everybody knows where we stand on this issue. Ms. Koopman, would you be the one that would be responding to this? Uh, Nina, could you please promote um, either Jill Hogan or Hugo Rincon, please? Yes, promoting right now. So I've promoted, I'll promote both of them. They should be making their way over shortly. Hi there. I, I can answer that question. We are targeting May to bring forward uh, the amendments that would apply to the neighborhood uh, in question this evening. I, I might just remind uh, Council that this will be dealt with, of course, uh, under item number two for consideration. So this might be the more appropriate spot for, for some of that, but not to cut you off, Councillor Best, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to have that clarification so we go, it uh, gives uh, <clears throat> us a better knowledge of what the uh, uh, process is because you know, when the interim bylaw was approved, it was for a whole year. So uh, I'm glad to see it's coming back sooner. That's all. Okay, thank you. And again, this will be dealt with, of course, uh, item number two for consideration a little bit later on. So, Mr. Jensen, thank you very much. And uh, the uh, next uh, delegates, uh, we have three of them, and I'm going to read them out in order. Uh, and this deals with the, uh, the subject, we make Melton Visioning report. The, uh, the first one uh, is Zoa Negar, and that deals with the, uh, the visioning uh, report. So Nina, if you would bring uh, Ms. Uh, Negar on, please. So Zoa, I promoted you over. You can just turn on your sound and your video whenever you're ready. And I'll get your presentation on the screen in a second. And you can just prompt me and I'll go through it. Welcome, Ms. Snugger. Good evening, Mayor Krantz, counselors, staff, and attendees. Next slide, please. We, we are having a little trouble hearing you there, so. Oh, sorry, can you hear me now? That's a little better, yep, yeah, thank you. Okay. I'm Zoha Negar, a grade 12 student from Bishop Reading Secondary School. I'm also 
a member of Fridays for Future Milton and Toronto, as well as a Milton Youth, as well as a member of the Milton Youth Committee and the Sustainable Milton Youth Committee. I'm honored to have the opportunity to be here to delegate. Some of you may have seen me at events in Milton, whether that be at a climate strike or protest or at political events during the federal campaign. My journey into the climate advocacy world began when I first learned what the words climate change meant. And from then on, I started to educate myself more and grew concerned as to why communities and elected officials weren't speaking to or upon it. As I read the We Make Milton Visioning Report, I tried to imagine how the guiding principles would lay the groundwork for my generation's future. How would these words become actions to ensure a vibrant, livable future for me here in Milton in 2051? Next slide. Firstly, we'd like to mention that we appreciate the work done to date. The visioning exercise was a great first step in engaging with Miltonians. The work undertaken by staff with current available resources and circumstances is commendable. And the report also, the report also organizes the follow-up steps taken really well. The guiding principles seem to be quite broad and comprehensive and town staff have created two committees, the stakeholder committee and the community leadership committee for this process. And we are very excited to be invited to participate with either of them. Next slide. Given the OP is planning and envisioning Milton in 2051, I am looking for an official action plan that will secure our sustainability. As a youth, but also a Milton citizen, I am slightly confused with a few things on the report and would like to bring them to your attention. First question, how do the vision statement and the guiding principles ensure a sustainable and socially just lens is applied across all aspects of the We Make Milton official plan project, especially as it affects current and future built forms? Second, how has stakeholder feedback, particularly feedback received since the initial draft, shaped the final guiding principles? Next slide. In terms of inclusiveness with the closing of stage two, how will feedback from equity seeking groups and communities who were unable to participate in this process to date be taken into consideration? Groups such as indigenous, youth, faith-based groups, economically diverse ones for engagement. And fourth, is there a way for the stage three big questions to begin, but leave room for the vision and guiding principles to be modified based on collaborative work inclusive of stakeholder engagement that is still ongoing? Next slide. So a few questions we had about the We Make Milton official plan stages are the stakeholder com committee and the community leadership committee are a great way to organize feedback. When will these committee members have the chance to interact with each other and town staff in a collaborative process? And most importantly, will youth be able to sit at the table? Second, what does the community engagement plan look like for the whole We Make Milton official plan project process? How will the lessons learned from the vision report be used to address gaps identified in the engagement process? And how will the public's input be addressed meaningfully in this process? Next slide. Third, in terms of our process, are we at parity with the rest of Halton's, Halton region and the surrounding municipality when it comes to climate strategies and planning? Is there an overall environmental target or vision for Milton's future that the We Make Milton official plan project is aiming to achieve and how does this align with the work of the Halton Region official plan review process and overall provincial policy di directions to address the impact of a changing climate? Next slide. Sustainable Milton is excited to be included in the stakeholder committee. We look forward to continued participation in the We Make Milton official plan project and to working with town staff to ensure that the future official plan policy supports a sustainable, equitable and resilient future for Milton. I really appreciate you sharing your time with me and Sustainable Milton, and I look forward to working with you all further. Thank you. Stagar, uh, thank you very much. Uh, members of uh, council, you've heard the uh, presentation. Are there any questions of the delegation? I'm not seeing any. I thank you very much. And again, this will be dealt with a little bit later on in our uh, agenda. And I thank you very much. Nina, the uh, next individual on this uh, topic is Wendy uh, Roberts uh, from the Italian Cultural Center of Milton. So if you could bring Ms. Roberts on, please. Yes, I've just promoted her over, Mayor. Um, she should be making her way over shortly. There we go. And I'm just going to get her presentation started. What 
whenever you're ready, Ms. Roberts, you can just prompt me to go through it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, for ready. yeah. Oh. Wendy, we can hear you there loud and clear. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mayor. So good evening, Mayor Krantz, other members of council, town staff, and members of the public. On behalf of the Italian Cultural Center of Milton, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Wendy Roberts. I represent the ICCM on the We Make Milton Community Leadership Committee. We provided a submission and a story to We Make Milton in October of 2020. Um, time won't permit me to review all of the details in our presentation tonight. I provided a copy of it in the speaking notes to council late yesterday afternoon. I hope you have had a chance to review it. And I should say that um, I think, uh, Zoe, you're a hard act to follow. Uh, so thank you. Um, next slide, please. We commend the project team for their work. We Make Milton is the best example of community engagement I have seen in my 40 years living in Milton. We recognize it as a huge undertaking in challenging times. That said, there has been an opportunity missed, which is why we are requesting that council endorse the vision statement and guiding principles, but in principle only at this stage. This will still allow the project to proceed and it will help ensure more fulsome engagement. It will provide the Indigenous community communities the opportunity to have input into the foundational work if they so choose, and will provide the opportunity to bring all of the stakeholders and community leaders together. Youth, seniors, developers, business leaders, climate change leaders, artists, and others. Please give us the chance to come together to share and exchange our ideas about the vision statement and guiding principles to make the pool of ideas and choices bigger and richer. Next slide, please. So why in principle only? The official plan is a critical document, a visionary document with a 30 year planning horizon. Once adopted, it is legally binding. The vision statement and guiding principles are the underpinning to all policy direction in the official plan, which makes them formation, foundational building blocks. If we are going to get the official plan right, we first need to ensure the foundation is solid. We believe we make Milton will get there, but isn't quite there. There have been a couple of steps missed, understandably given the enormity of the project. Next slide, please. Again, why just in principle? Because when people from different backgrounds, life experiences and perspectives have the opportunity to come together, it creates a synergy and a fuller, deeper exchange of ideas than when it is po than possible when we stay in our silos and simply provide info or input up, but not across. Next slide, please. It will be worth it to invest a little more time on the vision statement and guiding principles. Plus, a more fulsome engagement process itself pays big dividends. It can be transformative, create buy-in and pride and develop the ambassadors the project is looking for. Next slide, please. I can't speak for the Indigenous community or communities. However, I think I have a responsibility to highlight missed opportunities or not as fulsome in the engagement process thus far. We Make Milton um, was launched in July of 2019. Today's staff report states, quote, a strategy for Indigenous engagement is being developed. Correspondence I received suggests indiz Indigenous participation will be welcome in phase three, which implies there has not been or, or very limited Indigenous engagement uh, in phases one and two. The town and the provincial policy statement both acknowledge Indigenous engagement is an important and necessary part of land use planning. Given the vision statement and guiding principles are the foundation of the official plan, we believe council's endorsement at this time would be premature. Next slide, please. To rephrase this, we understand, if we understand nothing else about indigenous history and our path to reconciliation, we need to understand that the question that really matters is the question of land. Next slide, please. The ICCM asked about ind indigenous engagement in our October submission. Next slide, please. A missed opportunity is not necessarily a lost opportunity. The engagement of the stakeholder and community leadership committees has been limited so far. We have provided input up, but we have not yet had a chance to share our ideas or discuss those, uh, the vision statement or the guiding principles yet with one another. The project team met once with the Milton Youth Task Force, but my conversations with a couple of its members suggest that they have more to contribute um, to these building blocks. We Make Milton has not had the benefit of synergy and the richer and deeper pool of ideas it creates. It is not too late to capitalize on that synergy before these foundational pieces are endorsed. Next slide, please. 
The examples in the next three slides um, illustrate that the vision statement and guiding principles do not fully reflect or give adequate weight to the input received regarding climate change and sustainability. I would characterize the feedback provided even by the technical advisory committee as cool to lukewarm. And I'm gonna ask if you would jump to slide 13, please. Thank you. Given the limited attention paid to climate change and sustainability in the proposed vision statement and guiding principles, how will these crucial considerations make their way into the town's official plan in a substantive way and in a way that more accurately reflects all of the input received through all of the town's various visioning and engagement activities? Next slide, please. We believe the project team has the information it needs now to proceed to stage three not endorsing the vision statement and guiding principles uh, just yet provides the opportunity for more fulsome engagement and the flexibility to revisit and revise, revise. Next slide, please. In conclusion, we recommend that council accept the report and endorse the vision statement and guiding principles, but in principle only at this stage. Last slide, please. Thank you on behalf of the Italian Cultural Center of Milton, we look forward and are excited to continue our work with We Make Milton on this critically important, perhaps the most important planning document for the future of our community. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Ms. Roberts. Members of uh, council, are there any questions of uh, Wendy in her presentation? I'm not seeing any. And again, uh, Wendy, we will be dealing with this, of course, as you know, a little bit later on in the agenda. And I thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, third and, and last is uh, Usama Syed, and this, and he represents the Muslim Association. So, uh, Nina, if you could bring uh, Mr. Syed on, please. Yeah, Mr. Syed has just been promoted, and uh, he just has to turn on his sound and his video whenever he's ready. There we go. Yeah, hi. Can you guys see me? Yep, Mr. Syed, yes, you're coming across loud and clear. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and the rest of the mem members of council, as well as any town staff and participants. And uh, before I begin, I'd like to apologize for the delay that we had in registering for this. And at the same time, uh, thank you for providing us this platform on such short notice. My name is Osama Syed, and today I'll be, tonight I'll be representing the Muslim Association of Milton, a charitable, uh, religious charitable organization here in Milton that serves, uh, that serves the people in Milton as well as the GTA. And tonight I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about two issues. The first is our feedback on the final version of the visioning report. And there are some shared uh, uh, points um, as the previous two delegates. Uh, and secondly, uh, to reiterate our continued struggle in acquiring places of worship for our community which goes in line with what we didn't see in the visioning report. And that's not to say that we didn't see great things in there. The majority of what we saw in there are things that we agree with and we fully stand behind, but uh, there were just certain things that we believe uh, can be further uh, improved. And you know, the, the good that we see is a reflection of the great leadership as well uh, of the, the town, as well as uh, the staff, as well as the people within the city. Uh, so moving back to going back to the visioning report, when the Milton 2051 initiative was first announced, we were very excited and our community participated in a huge way on uh, November 20th, 2019. And unfortunately, since then, uh, we have seen, um, uh, obviously because of the pandemic, we haven't been able to be uh, involved in person but we tried to always um, you know, keep in touch with the staff. Uh, and upon reviewing the visioning report, we feel that not, uh, uh, not all our needs have been included. Uh, and so we have a few concerns regarding the outcome of the report. Um, the first is that it reports um, places of worship at a very low ranking under the top priority section. And we feel that the top priorities in the Milton 2051 vision should not simply be based on data from one visioning night, uh, the second is during the visioning night, we had a great opportunity to interact with the guest speaker that you had brought on board, Charles Montgomery, uh, during the Q&A session. And in that, he <coughs> agreed that places of worship are an integral part of the social fab fabric of society, and they should be in close proximity to residential dw dwellings. Unfortunately, we have not seen any reflection of this in the visioning report. 
our community, as you are aware, is in dire need of purpose-built community centers and places of worship. Over the past 15 years, the town of Milton has done a great job improving infrastructures for Miltonia, such as the hospital expansion, underpasses, newer, bigger libraries, uh, community centers, just to name a few. However, the number of places of worship have not increased over the last 15 years. Uh, in fact, most, if not all, existing places of worship have existed for the last 20 years or have been constructed on lands that were purchased by them decades ago for that purpose. Uh, and a quick comparison to other towns and cities across the GTA and suburbs would emphasize a disproportionate ratio while sadly putting Milton in the bottom tier for available places of worship based on demographics. Uh, the current pandemic that we are experiencing, along with its effects on men health, mental health, further emphasizes the need for a better approach to places of worship, especially considering that we are unable to pray uh, to provide prayer services that we were providing uh, at different community centers as they've been closed for the majority of the previous year. As such, we see the majority of Miltonians traveling to other cities to fulfill their faith-based needs. And this is something that I'm sure you'll all agree is unacceptable, especially since we as a town should be committed to providing our residents with essential services such as these. Uh, we find that there is not enough institutional land in Milton. Even if available, there is a long list of common uses under the same zoning code. For example, coffee shops, medical centers, grocery stores, and banks are all within the zoning. And we as a charitable religious institution cannot compete in this market. And there is no specific allocation of zoning for us. Uh, there are laws in effect to allocate lands for parks, schools, and other community services in every neighborhood, but there is no bylaw allocating zones for places of worship in these subdivisions, especially for a community like ours that doesn't have any, uh, and we believe that there needs to be a policy to allow small scale places of worship within residential communities. We urge the town of Milton and the planning team to focus on the issue and the dire need of our community for places of worship. And we request this topic to be addressed in stage three of the visioning report, uh, of the visioning process. There are thousands of Muslim homeowners in Milton paying taxes and contributing tremendously towards making Milton what it is today. And we have the same shared objectives, to be good citizens, to keep our youth focused on good morals and behavior by offering programs and activities for their overall development. And we need the town of Milton to work with us on these shared goals. As per the visioning report, living in Milton scores top points across the importance of themes, and we consider faith to be an important part of living, and therefore it needs to be given its due weightage. And we are aware of the study update on places of worship that will be presented to the council next month, and we will be participating in that. However, our participation tonight was meant to highlight what we believe to be the lack of importance and representation given to those places, uh, given to places of worship in the visioning report that was released recently. And I'd like to thank you for the time and I'm uh, open to any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sayed, very much for your uh, presentation. Members of uh, council, are there any questions with regards to the uh, presentation uh, on the visioning report? Uh, Councilor Chelner, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, Sama, thanks for your comments. I just want to make a couple of corrections and, and repeat an offer that I made uh, to your organization over a year ago. Uh, the number of religious institutions in Milton has increased over the last 15 years. Uh, it has uh, grown in various ways that perhaps aren't as, uh, as visible as, as some and, and continue to grow. There are more churches, mosques, temples coming into the community and have over the last 15 years. Uh, a year ago, uh, when you appeared before council, I said that uh, if you want to discuss it further, glad to sit down with you and look at some options because uh, I am relatively familiar with what's going on in the community when it comes to religious institutions. Uh, provide you with a copy of my book and didn't hear back. Uh, and so if you'd like to sit down after this meeting at some point digitally and have a coffee, glad to do that and share with you what is out there. I, that is not to say that I don't have empathy, I do. But there are some opportunities that are being missed and I don't want you to miss them. Uh, sure, Mr. thanks a lot for that. Uh, sorry. Mr. Syed, any uh, questions of Councillor Chalner and his uh, observation and his offers? Uh, no, I mean, uh, we appreciate, uh, uh, you know, the offer, the kind offer, and it's just that during the pandemic, I'm sure that there were a lot of restrictions. Uh, so this is not regarding the openness of the town of Milton, but more of what we didn't see in the visioning uh, report. Um, and so, yes, uh, we as an organization definitely will take you up on that offer, perhaps have a digital cup of coffee with you. Um, and look for any opportunities that are present. 
Councilor Chandler, any further? I look forward to the discussion. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Any other member of council, any you, uh, question of Mr. Sayed? I'm not seeing any. And again, as mentioned, uh, this uh, item will be uh, pursued a little bit later in our agenda. Mr. Sayed, thank you very much for your presentation. That does conclude thank the you, uh, the uh, the presentations on uh, delegation. So thank you very much. Madam Clerk, uh, we uh, now move into the uh, public meeting portion of the uh, the agenda. And I know that you have a bit of a script there. So Madam Clerk, over to you. Uh, thank you. We now come to the, the public meeting uh, portion of our meeting. Uh, so the first is a public meeting under the Planning Act with respect to the proposed common element plan of condominium by Madame Brownwich Limited, Martin East Phase 1, for lands known as 980 Logan Drive. As the type of condominium being common element was not identified at the time of the public meeting for the plan of subdivision, a separate public meeting must be held in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act and the Condominium Act. The purpose of this public meeting is to receive input on the proposal prior to the granting of draft plan approval by the Commissioner of Development Services for the proposed plan of condominium upon completion of the technical review and public consultation for the application. If you wish to be notified of the draft approval for the proposed common element plan of condominium, you must make written request to the town clerk at 150 Mary Street, Milton, or email townclerk at milton.ca. Representatives for the applicant are in attendance for this meeting. Staff will be taking detailed notes about questions asked, uh, but will only be speaking to points of clarification. The representative for the applicant will now provide a five minute presentation. During this presentation, a phone number and email address will be scrolling along the live stream video for members of the public who wish to speak on this item. For anyone wanting to connect, you'll be given step-by-step -step instructions on how to enter and participate in the meeting via phone only. As a reminder, the phone number is 1-866-511-0021 and the email address is townclerk at milton.ca. We can begin the presentation now. Good evening, my name is Alison Bucking. I'm from Korzak Urban Planning here on behalf of Madame Homes to speak in regards to the proposed draft plan of common element condominium located on block 260 within the Martin East plan of subdivision. Location. Block 260 is located on the southwest corner of the intersection of Logan Drive and Thompson Road, east of Hickory Crescent. Mattamy Homes is proposing to create a plan of common element condominium consisting of 35 freehold townhouse units in the form of rear lane, front loaded, and back-to-back -back townhouses connected via common elements. Common elements in this case would be condo roads, sidewalks, surface, visitor parking spaces, and some landscaped open space areas. Two parking spaces are provided per unit and 10 surface visitor parking spaces are proposed. As previously mentioned, Block 260 forms part of Phase 1 of the Matt and May Martin East Plan of Subdivision. This brings us here to the purpose of this public meeting. The Condominium Act and Planning Act requires public meetings for certain types of condominiums. As a type of condominium, common element was not identified at the time of public meeting for the plan of subdivision. A separate public meeting is now required. It is important to note that Block 260 is site plan approved. Detailed design drawings and technical studies were submitted and approved by staff in support of the site plan application. Therefore, the purpose of this meeting is not to discuss the design of the block, but rather the type of condominium. At this time, all 35 units have been sold and initial occupancy is expected to occur on April 7, 2021. On this slide, you'll see a rendered proposed draft plan of condominium. As shown in green, 22 rear lane townhouses are proposed, as shown in yellow, five two-story townhouses are proposed, and as shown in blue, eight back-to-back -back townhouses are proposed. Next steps. After this meeting, upon completion of the consultation and review process, staff recommends that draft approval of the plan of condominium be granted and draft plan of condominium conditions be issued to the applicant. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Uh, thank you uh, very much, members of council. Are there any questions with regards to the uh, presentation that you just heard? Seeing none, uh, Madam uh, Clerk, I'm not aware of any uh, listed delegation, but this is a uh, public uh, meeting, of course, so you have no indication of anyone wishing to address uh, this. So with that, uh, members of uh, council, I have a resolution moved by Councillor Chandler and second by Councillor Hamid and be it resolved that Development Service Report DS-007-21 be received for information and that the Town of Milton Council supports the granting of draft plan approval by the Commissioner of Development Services for the proposed plan of condominium upon completion of the technical review and public consultation for the application. Members of Council, are there any questions, any comments with regards to this report and this resolution? Seeing none, then uh, those, and I will assume that unless I see a hand go up like this, somebody will be opposed to it. But if not, I will assume the majority is in favor. I'm seeing no hands go up in opposition, so that motion is carried. Madam uh, Clerk, uh, under public meetings, uh, there is two. So the second one is staff report DS009-21, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this is a public meeting under the Planning Act with respect to official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment application by Village Developments, Inc. and Ornella Group, Inc. with respect to lands known as 180 and 194 Bronte Street South. The purpose of this public meeting is to receive input on the proposed applications. Council will receive will consider approval of the related bylaws for the, these applications at a later date. If you wish to be notified of the decisions, you must make a written request to the town clerk at 150 Mary Street, Milton, or email townclerk at milton.ca. Representatives for the applicant are in attendance for this meeting. Staff will be taking detailed notes about questions asked, but will only be speaking to points of clarification. The representative for the applicant will now provide a five minute presentation. During this presentation, a phone number and email address will be scrolling across the live stream video for members of the public who wish to speak on this item. For anyone wishing to connect, you'll be given step-by-step -step instructions on how to participate in the meeting via phone only. As a reminder, the phone number is 1-866-511-0021 and the email address is townclerk at milton.ca and we can begin the presentation. Good evening members of council. My name is Paul Demchek from Vittoria Management, the land use planning consultant on behalf of the applicant. The subject property before council tonight is located at 180 and 194 Brawny Street South. The property located at 180 and 194 Brawny Street South contains a total of 15 rental townhouse units and two detached dwellings, which are currently vacant on the property. The property is located on the west side of Brawny Street South, opposite the intersection of Barton Street, and is roughly rectangular in shape with approximately 60 meters of frontage on Brawny Street South and a total area of just over 7,500 square meters. Surrounding uses to the property, including residential townhouse units to the south, the rail corridor to the west, and further to the west residential uses. To the north includes residential townhomes and mid-rise residential apartments, and to the east including townhomes and single detached dwellings. The applicant for the property seeks to develop the lands with a nine-story residential apartment building. It is further intended that these residential units will be rental. The Town of Milton official plan designates the subject property as residential office area where the official plan generally encourages higher density development. Within this land use designation, eight stories is the maximum permitted height. The site is also located within an intensification area as identified on Schedule K, intensification areas of the Milton official plan. It is noted that the maximum units per hectare permitted on the property is currently set at 150 units per hectare. 
The subject site is dual zone residential medium density, RMD1 and a site specific RMD42 zone. Both properties and the zo applicable zoning bylaws permit townhouse units and there is a site specific amendment that was previously permitted for a development of 18 townhouse units on the southern property. A site specific zoning amendment is required to permit the proposed development. The proposed development is comprised of a nine story, 27.5 meters in height, residential apartment building containing 271 apartment units. A total of 426 vehicular parking spaces are proposed, 71 of which are proposed for visitors, and 255 bicycle parking spaces are also proposed. Two levels of underground parking are included with vehicular access to the subject site via Brawny Street South. As well, there is a total of just over 1,350 square meters of amenity space, of which 321 square meters are located indoors and just over 1,000 square meters located outdoors. Here is the subject site plan for the proposed development, including the locations of the vehicular access, the general locations of the built form for the proposed development, as well as access for uh, vehicular movements internal to the site. This is the proposed landscape plan showing the green amenity space, proposed landscape buffering. It is further noted that um, additional amenity space is proposed on the terraces of a number of the floors of the proposed development. What is shown here is a rendering of the proposed development. It is noted that the, the building is tiered in terms of its design to mitigate massing and overlook impacts specifically to um, the residential properties to the south, as well as provide a five-story element with a tier design up to nine stories towards the rear of the property. The proposed development requires applications to amend the Milton official plan to permit a density of 354 units per hectare, as well as permit a height of nine stories where the official plan currently permits an eight story uh, maximum height. An application to amend the zoning bylaw has also been submitted to permit an increase in density and other specific development criteria within the zoning bylaw. And a future site plan control application is intended to follow the proposed zoning and official plan amendment applications. This concludes the presentation and we look forward to comments and questions of council and the public on this application. Thank you very much. I thank you uh, very much. I understand the Councillor Besh, you have a question of the presenter, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you for the presentation. One uh, area that I haven't seen addressed is dealing with the uh, sea and embankment behind this uh, property, which is uh, getting to be quite a height and may increase in uh, volume. How do you plan on uh, attenuating that uh, noise as well as the uh, safety precautions? I have... oh, Councillor Best, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, and sorry, I apologize. I missed the first little bit of your um, your your question mm -hmm. there. There was a bit of a disconnect in terms of the um, uh, the message, but I did get the second part of the question being, um, how do you intend to to mitigate impacts in terms of noise and and height, et cetera? Yeah, no, it's actually regarding the uh, CN embankment behind the property. There's normally a 30 meter setback. I don't see any provision for one. Are you planning on putting a, uh, not only a noise wall, but a crash wall, which uh, is uh, stated in the Railway Act? Yes, thank you, Councillor, for the question. Uh, and through you, Mayor Krantz. Um, as part of the application, what we are proposing is a crash wall um, through the design of the development um, on the far western edge of the property. Um, this is buffered by um, uh, veh vehicular parking um, on the first few floors of the building. And the actual residential portion of the units don't start until 30 meters away from that rail corridor setback. So the crash wall uh, basically provides two things, not only um, from a safety concern, just in terms of its structural design, but also a noise separation from that corridor. Right. Thank you. That's all my questions. Just to make sure that was addressed. Are there any other uh, questions from members of council uh, with regards to the uh, presenter on this item? 
If not, Paul, thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor uh, Chandler, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I have uh, two questions. The first question is uh, around the height. Uh, it's higher than what is prescribed. And uh, the density, it is uh, far more dense than what the current uh, plan permits. Uh, what is the, uh, the reason why the application was brought forward, uh, knowing those two factors within the official plan today? Thank well, you very much. Ahead. Thank you very much, Councilor, for the question. Um, there are two components that I would like to address as it relates to um, why the proposal is here before you today. Um, the first one being when we looked at the design uh, in terms of mitigating impacts, we wanted to make sure that um, most importantly, we met the overall guidelines and requirements related to shadow impacts um, and separation distances that are required by the Milton Mid-Rise guidelines and took those into um, considerable um, efforts in terms of our overall design development. Um, the other um, second point of that is related, I would say, primarily to the density, being that this is a proposed rental um, building. Uh, these units are not intended to be condominium, and we are proposing a number of uh, units, um, obviously, for, in an effort to help with, um, um, uh, to be very candid with, you know, the financials of the development, um, being that, you know, rentals are um, a significant need within Milton and, frankly, the GTA. Uh, Your Worship, my second question relates to uh, the, the underground parking. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, perhaps incorrectly, that uh, the elevators will go to uh, the bottom of uh, the, uh, the, the second floor of parking. Uh, it hasn't always been the case in Milton. What is the plan for this building in terms of the elevators? So at this, thank you, Councillor, for the question. So at this point in time, parking is intended to, or sorry, the elevator is intended to go to both floors of the underground parking um, to provide access for residents. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, uh, Councillor Tesser Dirksen. I understand that you have a question of the presenter. Councillor Tesser Dirksen, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Paul, for the presentation. Just um, leading from Councillor Challoner's question about the more than double the density that you're proposing, are any of those rental units going to be um, reserved for affordable housing or programs of that nature with reduced um, rent? Thank you, Councillor, for the question. Um, there is the intention, obviously, there's an existing number of residential units on the property. And as per the, um, uh, the Landlord and Residential Tenancies Act, um, we are required to provide um, replacement units for those tenants if they so wish to come back um, to the building once it is complete. Um, and we will work with each of those tenants on a, an individualized basis moving forward. Um, I have not had conversations with um, my client, whether they will be, these units will be specifically affordable, um, but I can absolutely take that back. Councillor Tesser Dirksen, anything further? Uh, no, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I might just make mention that I'm aware the staff is taking notes on some of the, uh, the questions there and they will be, of course, uh, pursued for sure. So, yeah. Well, is there any further questions of the presenter? I'm seeing none, uh, keeping in mind that this is a public meeting and to the best of my knowledge, uh, we have one individual wishes to speak to this item and Cheryl McGreevy uh, Jackson, uh, Nina, if you could bring her on and uh, I'd ask her to identify herself, name and address, please. Nina, go ahead. Yes, Ms. Jackson has been brought in. Um, Ms. Jackson, you just have to unmute and then you can start speaking. Hi. Hi. Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. coming across okay. loud and clear. Welcome. Okay, sorry. Super, thank you. Sorry, I wasn't really prepared to uh, speak. I had created an email um, on Dawson Crescent, so which obviously borders against the fence line of this new um, build. We have a ton of concerns. Obviously, like there is a massive, massive tree line. Uh, lots of animals are living there, but basically we're really concerned about our value of our houses decreasing. So when we look out now, we are going to be looking at a potentially eight story building in our backyard, which is obviously a huge, huge eyesore. It's going to decrease our value inevitably. Um, and I'm not understanding how this has gotten this far without um, anyone protesting this up to this point. 
So Dawson okay. Crescent is not the only street that's going to be affected. It's going to be um, all the other streets are going to be able to see this eyesore from wherever they are located. All of Dawson Crescent, you're going to have the streets Barton, you're going to have Mary, everybody on Bronte is going to be staring at this. The traffic alone getting out of um, Dawson Crescent uh, during rush hour is a disaster. So I'm not sure how adding all these extra homes on a street that is already congested is going to be successful. Okay, uh, anything further, Ms. McVeary? All this is- uh, No, of I, would, being... I just want to know how, how this has gotten this far at this point, I guess is my question. And how are we addressing the fact that we as Dawson Crescent owners who back onto this, how, how are you addressing the fact that it's going to lower our, our value, our home value? Okay, those are all being recorded and I'm just going to read the resolution out here that Council will be dealing with uh, this moment. You and everyone else will have the opportunity for that input uh, there. Uh, I do have a resolution moved by Councillor Cluett and second by Councillor Chandler and be it resolved that Development Service Report DS009-21 be received for information. So I guess the point that I'm making is it's just being received for information and uh, uh, I'd refer to it, this is far from being etched in stone. Individuals like yourself will have, uh, uh, you know, ample input into what eventually may or may not happen there. So I'm not sure if that's of any comfort to you or not, but it's in the early process right now with council's approval of whatever it might be in the future. So. Okay, that's, uh, you know what, that does bring me comfort because I was under the impression with the notes that I just had just recently received that this was kind of going forward. So that does make me feel better that this is not edged in stone and that there's still time to go through the process. And um, that, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and again, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I know I caught the, uh, the Dawson uh, uh, Crescent uh, address, but I'm not sure if you gave a number just so as communications can be uh, uh, continued on. And I would certainly yeah. suggest you and anyone else that has interest in making sure that you contact the uh, the town. Okay, super. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm thank 17. You. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Th thank you very much. Is there anything else? Not for me, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there anyone else listed keeping in mind that this is a public meeting? The clerk is indicating to me that she has no one else has indicated uh, they wish to be heard on this uh, item. You heard uh, me read the resolution uh, out there before. Uh, is there any uh, questions by any member of council on this uh, resolution, Councillor Best? Yes, a question to staff uh, regarding the last uh, delegate's uh, concerns. Could staff uh, briefly outline what the process is and the estimated uh, timeline? Because uh, a lot of people, when they see these notices, aren't too sure what's involved with it, but in case anyone else is watching as well as the delegate. Yeah, Ms. Koopman, either you or one of your staff, uh, maybe address that, Barb? Through you, Your Worship, uh, we are at the initial stages of reviewing this application. Um, anyone who has written in previously or speaks at tonight's public meeting um, can get more information from staff. We will evaluate the application. Uh, we will address to the extent possible the comments raised this evening, as well as any other comments that we receive in the process. I can't give you a specific timeline as to when this application will be presented back to council with a recommendation. It really depends uh, when we conclude our evaluation of the application. Uh, but there is ample opportunity for uh, members of the public to make additional comments directly to staff. Councillor Best. That's great. Thank you very much. Any other uh, questions by any member of council on this uh, resolution? Not I, again, I'm going to work on an assumption unless I see a hand go up in opposition like this. I will assume majority of us are in favor of uh, this resolution. I'm not seeing any hands go up in opposition, so that motion is carried. Okay, uh, members of uh, council, we have one presentation and it's gonna be done by uh, 
Nancy uh, Reed, and we make Mountain Visioning uh, Report, which which is quite a uh, lengthy and well uh, prepared uh, document there. And if I could be so bold for just a moment before uh, Nancy makes the uh, the presentation, uh, this is certainly going to be one of the more critical uh, documents. And I talk about uh, the official plan review, not only locally, but regionally as well moving forward. And I think the point has been made earlier on by uh, two or three of the presenters on this item going to be critical on how this is handled moving uh, forward. So this is just one of the small steps on hopefully getting our uh, act in place moving uh, forward. And I'm well aware of the shopping list that's in this uh, report. Some of them likely will be made, some of them may not be, but uh, we're early on the process. And again, my regional colleagues are well aware there's a workshop coming up on uh, this coming Wednesday morning. Then of course it will be dealt with by regional council week uh, from Wednesday. So we're moving ahead quite rapidly, keeping in mind that uh, we, when I say we, the four area municipalities have to conform to uh, the regional uh, plan. So there's still a bit of work to be done by uh, all of us in the region of Halton, and that includes us in the uh, the town of Milton. So with that, a uh, little bit of an editorial, Miss Reed, if you would make your presentation, please. please. Good evening, your worship and members of council. My name is Nancy Reed and I'm a senior policy planner with the town. I'm really excited to be here tonight because this is a big milestone for We Make Milton, the town's new official plan project. So we've spent the last year and a half um, in stage one, listening and learning and stage two visioning. And based on all of the conversations we've had with the community, we've come up with a new proposed planning vision statement and a set of guiding principles. They're intended to be included in the new official plan, and they're also intended to help guide us through the next phases of the project while we start to craft policies. And so what is a planning vision statement? Well, it's meant to be a, an aspirational, descriptive statement of what we're working together, uh, working towards together as a community. We're looking at the year 2051 because that's the planning horizon that's been provided to us by the province. And so we've come up with this. Milton 2051, choice shapes us. In 2051, Milton offers a diversity of options for how and where we live, work, move, and grow. As we evolve, choice is what shapes us. We really like this um, vision statement because it works really well with Milton's corporate brand or tagline, which is a place of possibility. And in fact, we heard that in some of the feedback that we got. Choice shapes us means that choice is important to our residents. It means that the ability to provide choices will shape our future and also our landscape. It means that the new official plan will value the importance of choice. And it'll do this by providing flexibility where it's appropriate. What choice shapes us doesn't mean is that a bunch of choices have already been made for our residents and that these will go in the official plan. It doesn't mean that everyone's going to be happy because everyone gets the choices that they want. There's going to be compromises along the way. And it also doesn't mean that anything goes in Milton in terms of development. There are a set of provincial and regional policies as well as market realities, which we have to consider moving forward. So there's a set of guiding principles that have also been prepared, as I mentioned, and um, these are meant to articulate our vision statement a little bit more um, and explain how we're going to get there. These will also be included in the new official plan, and we're going to come back to them in the next uh, project stage as we come up with big questions for the community. We'll tackle them by referring back to our guiding principles. We shared our vision statement and guiding principles with a technical advisory committee last summer. We gave council a, a sneak peek. We had a consultation period in the early fall, which ended with a public open house on September 30th. We've also had about 35 to 40 one-on-one -on -one stakeholder and community leader interviews over the past few months. And based on everything, but the, everything that we've heard so far, generally what we've heard is that the visioning report is good and our work supports and works with the broader Milton brand. We've heard that the vision statement and guiding principles are appropriate, that they're forward thinking, that they reflect the diversity and the reality of Milton today, as well as what we've heard so far. We've heard that there's a need to be clear and careful with the word choice and that we're going to need to think um, about people who may not want more choice 
or about people who have fewer choices available to them because of special needs or socioeconomic gaps. We've also heard that there were a few things missing from the visioning report, and that was a, a strong recognition of um, climate change and the need for adaptation and mitigation. We also heard that uh, there's challenges unique to rural Milton as well as urban Milton, and, and we're going to need to talk about how to address some of those challenges. So we recognize there's still work to do, um, and we're moving into uh, what we call big questions. And we're working on a set of background and information papers as part of this stage, and we'll be coming back to the community with our big questions. These will help us figure out how to write appropriate policies for the new official plan to deal with specific planning challenges. And we're all about stakeholder engagement and relationship building, so there's going to be a lot more of that happening um, and lots of opportunities to talk about the big questions together. But in order to get there, um, what we're asking of Council tonight is that the proposed planning vision statement and guiding principles be endorsed and that they be used to help guide subsequent phases of We Make Milton. That's our request tonight. Thank you for your time. Resolution, and then uh, there may be questions or comments. A resolution moved by Councillor Cluett and seconded by Councillor Chellner. And be it resolved, the council receive report number DS005-21 for information and that the proposed vision statement and guiding principle be endorsed by council and that they be used to guide subsequent phases as we make Milton. And members of council, that will be the resolution uh, that we'll be uh, dealing with. Councillor DiLorenzo first, go ahead. Thank you. And I had Councilor a, Tessa Dirksen. Thank you. I had a question. I know some of us received um, some contacts from residents asking about if Indigenous groups in Milton were uh, contacted or, or, or part of the early exercises on the on the vision uh, on the visioning document. Um, I know we're just endorsing in principle, uh, but Wendy from ICCM also had a question about that. So I just wanted to ask town staff. Um, I wasn't sure if there were. Indigenous groups in Milton that we re that we reach, reached out to them, or if they reached out to us, or if there was a plan in the future to um, include them in this exercise. Nancy, I know that you were the uh, presenter on this, but I know that there's other people that's been working on this as well. So, see, Jill, you popped up on the screen. So, Jill, you might be the most appropriate to respond to that question. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor DiLorenzo, for the question. It is absolutely within our, our plan to communicate and consult with the Indigenous community. Uh, we'll be working very closely with our strategic communications group at the town in developing that strategy in this next phase of the process. And I think it's important to remember, too, that um, while we're asking for your endorsement this evening, should something come through uh, subsequent engagement, we can always circle back and tweak things and, and update council accordingly. But it's certainly within our plan to uh, engage with our Indigenous partners. Councillor Di Lorenzo. Uh, just one follow-up question. So I, I think I heard that if council endorses this in, in principle, it's not gonna tie our hands to making changes if the indigenous community looks at it and kind of wants um, some of the um, um, guiding principles or, or, or if town staff and indigenous group meet afterwards, it, it still allows us to change. It's, nothing's being locked in stone. That's correct. Okay, Councilor thank Lorenzo. Thank you. Councilor Tessa Dirksen, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Nancy, for the presentation. Very similar to question to Councillor DiLorenzo. Um, and, you know, I read in the report that there was Indigenous engagement. I'm, I'm wondering if there's, because we've engaged with lots of stakeholders, is there a different process that we follow out of principle or out of regulation when we're um, engaging Indigenous communities? I just, I'm, I'm really concerned. I don't want this to look like it was an afterthought because it's not, obviously. So I'm just wondering why the discussion is now at the point where we are putting a plan together to engage Indigenous groups and if there's a reason for that. Nancy or Jill? Uh, thank, thank you very much for the question. Um, 
it's as as you said, Councillor. It's certainly not an afterthought. It's always been in the forefront. Um, what we want to do is ensure that we can consult with our Indigenous partners in in a really meaningful way, and we plan on reaching out um, to the various Indigenous leaders in the very near future to start those discussions. It it has been something that um, uh, we we're learning as as we go along um to date in terms of our engagement processes with with the indigenous community it's been more so in relation to um construction or um uh, archaeological type work and that's when 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 we have been in touch but this is more of a, a, a broader process um, we will be uh, as I mentioned we will be working with our strategic communications group uh, we have a new government relations uh, person on board that will help help us through that process and I think um, we will be able to report back to council in our next uh, we make Milton report and and describe that that consultation but certainly not an after afterthought it's it's been at the forefront we just want to make sure that we're doing it in a meaningful way and uh, that we can bring the right people to the table councillor tester dirksen any further uh, no that's good thank you very much yeah just before i move to uh councillor chandler just picking up uh councillor tester dirksen and uh councillor di lorenzo on the indigenous indigenous involvement there conservation halton has been for many many years quite involved and there has been a fair bit of acknowledgement in this uh, regard not necessarily by Melton Council over the years but uh, it's not certainly gone unnoticed by a lot of those lands that sometimes is referred to and again I'll use as an example the illustration of where you and I know where the uh, the Halton Region landfill is now it went through quite an extensive uh, you know, survey and, uh, you know, looking for arrowheads and, you know, other stuff that would not impede that. So uh, that's always been the case. So nothing, in, at least in my opinion, has been lost in that regard. Ramping it up a little wee bit more uh, is probably a, a good thing as well. So just again, another little editorial on my part is certainly not an afterthought for sure. So with that, Councillor uh, Chandler, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I want to thank staff for uh, the work they've done so far. Uh, I uh, had a question with respect to review. So uh, I think the challenge that we faced uh, currently in the, in the town of Milton is the length of time that is, has gone between the last official plan and the next official plan. At this point, we're at uh, 24 years. And uh, I had in my conversations with staff talked about implementing in some way, shape or form uh, a five year review period or a review period that, that staff were comfortable undertaking that would allow, uh, you know, the questions to, to be asked that we heard earlier and, and, and during this discussion, uh, you know, about things not necessarily being carved in stone where, you know, in five years you could review uh, you know, the guidelines and uh, the vision statement and other things to make sure that they were still relevant uh, to confirm that, that the official plan that had been approved was still the official plan to go forward with. In my view, we should be doing new official plans every 10 years. Uh, and so I'm kind of curious as to, as to how staff feel about the implementation of, of some sort of, of, uh, of policy that allows for a more formal review at least every five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillor Chandler, I'm going to go to uh, our CAO. I know him and Ms. Koopmans uh, have been quite involved in this. And you heard me say earlier on that this is a very important document uh, going forward for the next, you know, 2051. And of course, I s totally concur. Uh, every five years is what it should have been uh, there, at least in my uh, opinion, uh, but it's a long and arduous process and a very expensive process there on dealing with. But uh, with that, uh, Mr. CEO, if you could maybe start that, uh, addressing that uh, time frame that Councillor Chandler alludes to. Uh, I can uh, I can start it, uh, Your Worship, and, and Barb will, who has been our uh, 
uh, formerly our policy planner for the last uh, several years prior, will be able to uh, finish it off. It is uh, something that we would like to be able to do to do more regular updates and keep these documents uh, current. They did and have gotten punted over the years further and further out uh, from a timeline, but I think uh, Barb will tell you we're committed to keeping these documents more current than we have in the past. Barb? Yes, through you, Your Worship. Um, I echo uh, Andrew's comments. Certainly it is important that we continue to monitor and update uh, the official plan as policy changes occur at the provincial and regional levels, as well as we, and we gain experience with growth and development and we learn more about uh, how the community needs to evolve and make sure that the policies remain relevant. So certainly uh, it is something that we can address. Typically uh, there are policies in an official plan that speak to um, the regularity of review of its policies, and we will certainly keep that in mind as we move forward with actual policy development. Cause Chalner. Uh, Your Worship, I appreciate hearing that, and I just want to conclude by saying that I appreciate uh, that staff included in this, in this document, and I'm sure they'll include in other documents, the fact that uh, you know, the town of Milton must conform to regional and provincial policy. And that is clearly stated in the document. And I think that's really important. And I want to thank them for doing that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Councillor Ali, please go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I just want to further what my two colleagues, uh, Councillor Tessar Dirksen and Councillor Di Lorenzo mentioned before about the uh, Indigenous groups. My suggestion to staff is to also consult and include the Halton District School Board into this discussion. They have a very robust uh, program when it comes to Indigenous communities. They really have their hand on the pulse of this matter and they're in contact with a lot of community elders as well. So it's kind of, it's going to streamline the process a little bit and I hope uh, staff have taken notes. Um, another one relates to one of the one of the phrases I caught on the pages, and it's on page 46, it says public realm. It says prioritize public realm. And what does that mean, public realm? Does it mean we will prioritize what people want? Is that what it means? I was kind of confused with that. Jill, uh, on that, or uh, Nancy? Yeah, you may have caught a bit of a plannerism there uh, through you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, pu by public realm, we mean public spaces. And I think through a lot of what's happening right now with COVID, uh, we're hearing about the importance of public spaces and being able to socialize and interact. And uh, so prioritizing that through our policies is something we want to explore in stage three. Thank you. Uh, so that means basically places where people can congregate. Yeah, and these may be publicly owned or privately owned. And uh, a trend that's happening right now is um, private developers providing these public spaces to gather. And um, so you'll see the term POPs in our report, publicly owned private uh, public spaces. Um, so it's not necessarily about the ownership, it's, it's more about, yes, being able to um, have spontaneous interaction and uh, uh, collaboration. Thank you. So I just, I, maybe an idea is to maybe make the document more simplified. So when people read it, they really, you know, it's easy to understand so that their input is easy for us to understand as well. Thank you. Okay, I thank you very much. I do not at this point have any uh, further speakers to the uh, motion that I read a few minutes ago. Uh, I have one uh, question again, uh, probably Ms. Koopman, you might uh, be best to respond to that. And I, I know Mr. Sayed made the uh, presentation earlier on with regards to making provision for uh, religious uh, institutes. And I take that very serious as well as to what I think he was uh, advocating there as well. And I also appreciate Councillor Chalner's uh, offer to, to assist in that area. But I think it should be very clear as to what our responsibilities, legal responsibilities are when it comes to official plans. So uh, I don't want to mislead anyone uh, 
as to what uh, you know will be needed uh, in this regard. And I know, Barb, you and I have had some of these discussions in the uh, the past. And I, I, last thing I want to do is mislead anyone. Through you, Your Worship, we have heard loud and clear from the community that there is a need for enabling policies. Uh, we are working with various faith groups and cultural groups uh, through the preparation of the official plan. Uh, Nancy and Jill and the team have done tremendous amount of outreach work uh, to date and will continue to do so and explain to groups how they can work within the um, parameters of our official plan, uh, how they can get engaged, how they can identify uh, appropriate um, spaces for places of worship and other uh, cultural facilities to suit uh, the entire population of Milton. So we do recognize uh, the need for places of worship as part of a complete community. I think uh, there's work to be done um, both through the official plan and otherwise in engaging with these communities to help them understand how they can acquire land and how they can participate more effectively. Thank you. I just didn't want that to uh, slide by us because I know that I think the biggest majority of us, including me, uh, is very serious about trying to make provision for every use there is in the town of Milton, including religious uh, groups and organizations. So with that, thanks very much for that explanation, Barb. I think it goes a long ways for a little bit of clarity as to our involvement in it. So with that, uh, members of council, I do not see any further uh, hands up there speaking to it. And again, I will work on an assumption unless I see a hand go up in opposition that everyone is in favor of this resolution. I talk about the Milton Visioning Report. I do not see any hands going up there in opposition, so that is carried. Members of uh, council dealing with items for consideration. The first one is a resolution moved by Councillor Clute and second by Councillor Hamid. Be it resolved that staff be authorized to administer the 2021 COVID-19 tax deferral by application program as outlined in Appendix A. And again, there's no presentation on this, but uh, Glenn is here to answer any uh, questions that anyone might have on this report and or this resolution. Any questions on the, the report or the resolution? Being none again, I will work on the assumption that the majority of us are in favor of it, unless I see a hand go up in opposition. And that's carried. Next, earlier on, uh, members of council, we uh, did have a delegation on this one uh, earlier on. Resolution moved by Councillor Hamid and seconded by Councillor Cluett and be it resolved the report DS 012-21 dated February 2021 with respect to a request for a site-specific exemption to the interim control bylaw uh, 082-2020 by the property owners of 244 Bell Street Milton be received. And further, the council approved the proposed amendment to interim control bylaw 082-2020 attached as, a, as appendix two to permit a site-specific exemption to bylaw 082-2020 for 244 Bell Street in Milton. Again, staff is here to respond to any uh, questions with regards to this report or this resolution. So. Any member of council, any questions? Uh, Councillor uh, Chalner, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Best, I thought, raised a, made an interesting comment, and it raises the question uh, about, and, and I'll, I'll preface by saying I'm fully supportive of the, of the, of the bylaw. I, I supported it uh, when it came before council. I think it's the right thing to do. But, uh, you know, how many of these are going to find their way before us over the next year? Have, have a number of uh, building applications or renovation applications have been caught in this web over the next 12 months or so, or is this uh, an outlier? 
Yeah, very good uh, question, Ms. Koopman. Do you or any member of uh, staff any, uh, have any uh, feel for how many may uh, be coming forward, Ms. Koopman? Through you, Your Worship, um, I actually don't anticipate that there will be that many requests. As uh, Jill Hogan mentioned earlier, we anticipate the um, next uh, amendment for this area to be coming forward uh, in the spring of this year and tabling a report. So the interim control bylaw is not by any means intended uh, to stay in place for the entire year. As soon as the report and the new zoning bylaw provisions are in, uh, in spring, it will be repealed. Councilor Chandler. Thanks, Your Worship. Any other uh, questions with regards to this report and or this resolution? If not, and again, unless I see a hand go up in opposition, I will assume the majority of us are in favor of this uh, resolution. I don't see any hands going up in opposition. So that is carried. The next uh, item number three under items for consideration. It's a fairly lengthy uh, resolution. I know members of council that everybody has it in front of them on their uh, report. I'm not going to read it all out, but is there any questions? And this deals with report uh, 013-21 and the reference is the Pony Pines uh, development. Councillor Councillor Best, uh, Councillor uh, Chandler and Councillor Ali, please go ahead, Councillor Best. Yes, uh, as I mentioned in previous uh, applications, this uh, uh, area is the closest to the proposed uh, sea enter to model, whether it goes or not. What uh, warning provisions uh, would uh, staff be proposing in the agreements and also at the uh, sales office so people are informed of what uh, could happen right across the street for them? I'm, I'm still uh, surprised that pe you know, some people in town have never heard of this application, even though they you know, live within a kilometer or two. Ms. Koopman. Through you, Your Worship. Um, town staff, planning staff are working. We have circulated the application to CN. There will be their standard noise clauses uh, as well in consultation with the developer. Um, we are uh, making special provision to put in warning clauses that identify uh, the potential for the intermodal facility so that purchasers are made well aware of uh, the proposed facility. Councilor Best? Is there any uh, possibility of having some signage or information at the sales offices before people make the decision? Because I found in other situations where people find out about chicken farm on like page 17 of the offer. And it's usually after they've already moved in that they actually realize that they're downwind of something. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, certainly Councilor Best, we can look at opportunities for signage. That's great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Chandler, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, first question is similar to Councilor Best question. Uh, you know, can we go as far as to have this registered on title? Because uh, the issue typically is not the first generation homeowner, it's the second generation homeowner. Ms. Koopman. Through you, Your Worship. Um, the subdivision agreement does contain all these warning clauses and the subdivision agreement is registered on title and these clauses remain on title. We do not discharge the uh, subdivision agreement. So it is available. Okay. Councilor Chandler. Uh, yes, so uh, your worship, the second question is, is there may, mention is made of a historical building. And uh, fortunately, you know, over the last few years, the attitude by the development community towards these buildings is changing. Uh, they're seeing them as they should have always been seen, and that is an opportunity to make more money. What is the plan for the building uh, in this subdivision? Ms. Koopman. Um, through you, Your Worship, um, the uh, applicant, uh, Katie Schofield of Great Gulf Homes, is uh, standing by, and perhaps she might be best to answer that question. Uh, Nina, could you bring her on, please? Yes, yeah, so I promoted Katie. Katie, whenever you're ready, you just have to turn on your sound and your video. Thanks, Nina. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, Katie. Yeah, and absolutely. Welcome. Sorry, the historic building that was on Tremaine um, is 
uh, although it wasn't designated, it, it, we are preserving that building and uh, that house and it will be relocated um, to a, uh, another more prominent lot within the plan of subdivision and it will be rectified and, and refurbished and it will be sold as a home. So we've done this and we just did it recently in the town of Oakville and we also did it in, um, in uh, the city of Guelph. So quite successfully and, and I agree with you. I think it's, uh, it, it uh, you know, really encourages, um, you know, the historic uh, nature of the, of the home. It will become the most, yeah, it'll become the most valuable property in the subdivision and I thank you for doing that. Any uh -huh. further comments, Chandler? Councillor Ali, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you, I just wanted to uh, talk to staff. Um, uh, Councillor Best already discussed the CN intermodal matter pertaining to this location. I wanted to talk about the issue of parking inside the garage and on the driveway. What I'm noticing in this um, area, southwest of Milton, the ward I represent is that a lot of people who move in from other regions are not aware that we do not allow overnight parking and that is a shocker for them. And I sort of feel that, you know, this should be, this information should be part of the agreement that yes, you do have two parking spots, one inside your garage and one on the driveway. And we do not allow overnight parking. I think this should be part of the agreement. I think there should be also a notice up on the sales office that says that. If we can make that happen um, through staff direction or whatever, please do that. Okay, I'm not sure, Ms. Koopman, just on that. Uh, it's certainly not unique, I don't think, to Milton. I suspect that every community, certainly in the greater Toronto area, is faced with the same issues that Councillor Ali uh, refers to. So I'm not sure just how far down we want to go on this one. But Ms. Koopman? Through you, Your Worship, we do have a number of standard clauses in uh, the draft plan conditions that then are translated into the subdivision agreement and reflected in the individual agreements of purchase and sale. So we will make sure that all those are in place as it relates to uh, the anticipated draft plan approval. Um, the uh, applicant, uh, Great Golf Homes, is also supportive of having these clauses included. Councillor Lee, any further? Uh, nothing further, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anything further on this uh, resolution that uh, was just read? If not, I will work on the assumption once again, unless I see a hand go up in opposition uh, that everyone is in favor of that. And that is carried. Thank you very much. The uh, next, again, is a notice of uh, motion. Uh, Councillor Best, uh, uh, you are bringing this forward. And again, I know this isn't the time for a lot of debate on it, but Councillor Best, quickly. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Tessa Dirksen and I have been approached by residents on this uh, line, not only at this uh, uh, crossing at uh, number three side road in uh, first line Nasquay, but other areas such as Moffat. Unfortunately, there seems to be an increase in uh, rail traffic on this line that uh, nobody ever noticed before. Now we have trains uh, blowing their whistles at uh, midnight, two and four o'clock in the morning. What the residents are asking for is a quiet time. They understand the safety implications, but the understanding is that there is some provisions in the Railway Act that uh, the whistling can be stopped at night. So I'm asking uh, staff to uh, review any implications and report back to council. Thank you, Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Any further to that? Uh, just to mention that, you know, we are alive to the reason for the whistling. I mean, it's a safety issue and uh, railroads are already uh, subject to some safety concerns. So um, we have to balance that with the ability of residents in the area to sleep. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to hearing staff's comments on that in the report. Thank you. I'll read the uh, resolution. The uh, resolution moved by Councillor Best and seconded by Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Be it resolved uh, 
Uh, be it resolved that staff be directed to prepare a staff report with respect to a resident's request for a quiet time for train, train whistling at the rail crossing located near the intersection of First Line Nascaweya and number three side road. Any, Councilor Chandler? Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Councilor Bess and Councilor Tessa Dirksen for this. Um, I fully support it. Uh, as Councilor Bess will recall, and, and, and Councilor Malibu, if I knew Your Worship, uh, we've dealt with this you know, for, for about 40 years at least. Uh, I am assuming uh, that what staff are going to come back with is that we will have to assume the liability and so assume an insurance cost associated with uh, no longer having whistling at, at, this, uh, at this intersection. Is that probably the, the end result here? Well, at least in my opinion, uh, you mentioned the past 40 years, and I think you're absolutely correct in your uh, observations. That's likely uh, going to be it. My recollection is that every year there's a $500 uh, charge and that may have changed to every, uh, every crossing that uh, there's no more whistling, but we'll find that out uh, if this passes here when the staff report comes back, assuming that this motion passes. Yeah. And, and your worship and uh, the councillors who brought this forward, I'll be fully supportive of that too. It, it has worked, uh, you know, the town, this is not our first rodeo when it comes to no. this issue. And uh, I, think, I think it's the appropriate way to handle it. And I want to thank you guys for bringing it forward. Yeah, most definitely. Okay, is there any further speakers to this motion? If not, unless I see a hand go up, I will assume the majority of us are in favor of this resolution. I do not see any hands going up, so that motion is carried. Okay, uh, item number uh, five that uh, is uh, the last item uh, here now under items for consideration. And I'm going to read this out. And again, uh, Councillor Chandler and Councillor Malbouf can uh, speak to it. Be it resolved that whereas Highway 401 is being widened considerably, and as a result, traffic noise through the Milton Corridor is expected to increase. And whereas Ontario Ministry of Transportation has communicated to the town of Milton that a noise barrier through the Highway 401 Milton Corridor would not meet the technical warrants as indicated within the traffic noise impact assessment for the 401 expansion from Regional Road 25 to the Credit River. And whereas Milton Council would like to have a meeting to discuss the erection of noise barriers through the Highway 401 Milton Corridor and reconsideration of this matter by the Ontario Ministry of Transportation. Therefore, be it resolved that Council Direct Mayor Gord Kranz to quickly arrange a meeting with MP, Milton MPP, Parmgale, town staff and affected town council to discuss and develop an effective strategy to engage Ontario Ministry of Transportation, Minister Caroline, Carolyn Mulroney and senior ministry staff about constructing a noise barrier along the Highway 401 Milton Corridor. Councillor Chandler. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I want to first of all ap apologize to, to uh, all members of council for bringing this forward at the last minute. Uh, it was actually Friday. Uh, I became aware from talking to staff that uh, this had not gone as we'd all hoped. Uh, we actually had asked for a meeting a year ago uh, and didn't get it. And, uh, and of course, we're not going to meet again for a month. And uh, the door is closing and we need to get on this if we hope to have any opportunity to uh, get, as what, get what we believe is required along the, the Highway 401 uh, Milton Corridor. So that is the purpose of, of, the, uh, of the resolution. And again, uh, I apologize for bringing it this quickly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Mel Booth has a second or any further you wish to add? Uh, no, Councillor Challenge expressed my position on it. I mean, <clears throat> it's imperative that we get this wall before the, the expansion, and uh, we're not getting any reaction. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad Councillor Challenge brought it forward, and I'm happy to second it. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Tessa Dirksen, please go ahead. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's my turn to thank Councillor Chaloner for bringing forward this motion. Um, I, we've heard in the past from residents out in Campbellville, actually, who are close to the 401, same concerns. So uh, it's something that needs to be addressed, and not only with the 401 expansion, but I think it's something we're going to see more commonly in urban parts of town. Councillor Best and I are dealing with some residents um, off Ontario Street as traffic increases and the encroaches on existing residential areas and the noise becomes uh, disturbing to residents, these are things we're going to have to um, address, I think, on a more frequent basis than we're used to. So I, I fully support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Just before I get to uh, Councillor Best, uh, if I would be permitted to editorialize a little bit about your comments about the Campbellville uh, area. Staff and I had some brief discussion on that really, really recently when I knew that this was coming. So it's been an issue in the rural area, in the Campbell area. So that hasn't lost, uh, you know, from uh, my uh, observations as to, well, what's going on in the 401. So that may be the next one that we might have to address at some uh, future point. So it's certainly not lost on me for sure. Councillor Best? Yes, uh, Your Worship, uh, same uh, comments as well. And thanks, uh, Councillor Challoner and Melville, for bringing this forward. Just make us uh, request a small modification if we could extend it for you know the 401 in all residential areas, because as Councillor Tessa Dirksen and I are quite aware, the Milton Heights area is uh, certainly a very loud area. And uh, after standing there for a number of hours every weekend through the summer, uh, if anyone uh, you know wanting to move into that area is going to be very shocked at the noise level. So I'd ask that uh, we possibly amend this motion to include Milton Heights and Camerville. Okay, I personally don't have any uh, issues with that. Uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Chandler and Councillor Malbouf, I'm seeing the thumbs up there from both, both of them to have that included, Councillor Best, so that will actually be included in uh, that. So the clerk will already have that uh, noted. So that'll be included in this as well for that consideration. So, Councillor Best, anything further? Anything further on this uh, motion uh, this evening by any member of council? And again, unless I see a hand go up in opposition, I will assume that it's carried. I don't see any hands going up, so that is carried. Okay, regional council updates. Any one of my regional council colleagues, anything that they wish to bring forward at this uh, time? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Best, go ahead. Yes, uh, Your Worship, uh, you alluded to uh, some of our uh, challenges we have on Wednesday at the workshop, but also uh, next regional council on Wednesday, the uh, 17th. We also have a report, which I've circulated to the local councillors in the area as well, of changing uh, Milton's well water system, either to uh, reduce it, upgrade it, or switch it over to the lake-based system. This is just the initial report. Staff are going to be studying the implications, and uh, I hope to get this information out to the public as well, because it, as you're well aware, you know, your worship, this has been a, a long story in terms of uh, where Milton's water comes from. Yeah, very true. Uh, just on that, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the most recent that I'm aware of, so, uh, of course, a fair bit of it comes from Lake Ontario now, some of it comes from the Council Wells, and some of it comes from the Walker Line uh, Wells as well. So, yeah, and you're absolutely right, a lot of people certainly aren't probably aware of that, where our water and our respective different parts of the community comes from. So, thank you. Councillor Malbu for Councillor Hamid, uh, Councillor Kut, either one of you gentlemen, anything? And again, I alluded to it earlier on and Councillor Best uh, touched on, I think one of the critical things that the Regional Council will be dealing with will be the workshop on Wednesday, dealing with the upcoming uh, official plan review. And then of course, dealing with it, that Regional Council a, a week this Wednesday. So a lot of work to be done by us elected uh, people at the regional level, and of course staff as well at the four area municipalities and the region bring it all together, so. With that, that's all that I had on regional council update. Statements by any member of council at this uh, point, Councillor Chandler, go ahead and Councillor Malbuff. Uh, just very quickly, your worship, uh, appreciate the report that was brought forward by staff tonight on, on tax deferral. Uh, 
wondered if uh, staff are now looking at all of the, uh, the bylaws last year that we passed providing temporary relief to the business community. And given that we're probably in this current state till at least September, uh, is there a plan to uh, take a look at those decisions made last year and perhaps uh, extend them to September of 2021? Yeah. Glenn, I think you might be the most appropriate maybe to address them. Glenn, if you would uh, come on, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just for clarity, when we talk about the bylaws extension to the business community, are we talking strictly on the property tax file? Or are you thinking some of the outdoor patio type uh, programs that we had as well? Uh, yes, Glenn. Uh, uh, it has to do with outdoor patios and a few other things. And, uh, and again, I, I, well, I just wanted to thank you for bringing forward uh, the tax deferral bylaw this evening. So, but yes, okay. this does relate to uh, other bylaws. All right, and I see Commissioner Koopmans is just uh, logged in as well here. So maybe for the patio specifically, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Koopman. Barb, go ahead. Through you, Worship. Uh, yes, we are turning our minds to extending the patio program. Uh, we are looking at both short-term relief and uh, ultimately looking at um, a long-term seasonal um, but permanent patio program to support our restaurants in the downtown there will be a memo presented to council uh, in the next day or so that outlines the next steps that we are taking. It, it has been drafted. It's just being finalized. Councilor Chandler. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Councilor Malbuff, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to our Commissioner of Community Services. Uh, and it surrounds the, the problem we're facing. Uh, we've all heard about it concerning people using our storm, stormwater ponds for sk skating rinks and hockey rinks. And despite our efforts to enforce uh, the no trespassing or to stay off it, uh, people are still using it. And the argument we're getting back in, in response is Milton does not have any outdoor rinks. So could the, Christine, could you just remind us of what exactly our, our policy is and uh, concerning outdoor rinks? And are we giving any consideration to down the road uh, implement some sort of outdoor rink like they're doing in Oakville and Mississauga? Yeah, thanks, Councilor Malbuff. Thanks, Councilor Malbuff. Um, I know Council's received a memo um, that uh, strategic communications sent out that obviously the, the public may not be privy to, but. Certainly, um, we, as mentioned to, uh, in the memo, we are looking at a, um, a type of program where it would be essentially a community rink program. A lot of municipalities in our surrounding communities already have these types of programs established. Um, so we would look at um, taking a look at some of the best practices in some of these communities and bringing forward a report to council probably towards the end of Q2 and early Q3. Um, there would be obviously some cost implications, um, but the majority of the costs um, for um, maintaining ice surfaces that are, are uh, not artificial um, are related to resourcing. So that's why a lot of communities use, the, use community members. Um, we will still have the same challenge with weather in Milton. Um, so, um, but again, this would be up to the community if they decide that they want to try to build a rink in their area and we can identify a location suitable, we, we could certainly uh, uh, work with them subject to council's approval of the program. But obviously safety messages and even Milton Minor Hockey sent one out to their membership today is please, please, please stay off the stormwater management ponds. It is not safe. They're not designed for that. Okay, thank you for that. And you know, you're talking, looking at 22, 23. I'd appreciate it, and maybe you know, if we could take a look at the winter of you know, 2021, because there are a lot of communities. People have called me saying they're prepared to maintain the rinks, they're prepared to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we would just give them the plot of land and, and permission to do it. So, uh, if we could do something earlier, that'd be better. But it's too late for this year, I know. But nobody knew our rinks would our hockey arenas would be shut down and yeah. all of that so i understand but we're get, i'm getting a lot of calls and i'm sure the other counselors are hearing from, from people as well you know because we don't have the outdoor rinks there's nothing for our, our kids to do so mm -hmm. through, you. through your worship the intent would be to bring forward a program for council's consideration um and obviously subject to available available budget it's certainly a program that if the community had the will 
um, to volunteer their time towards. It's certainly something that we could look to implementing um, in the 2021-2022 winter season. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, and again, uh, just one small editorial on my uh, part there. Certainly support what uh, is being advocated there, Councillor Melbooth, and thanks to Christine for that. But I guess I have one uh, question of uh, the nine of us. How many of us uh, never paid any attention to our parents when they suggested that we shouldn't go on a uh, pond someplace? I'll be the first one to admit. And uh, I think this is where some of the problem is, is with parents and the uh, kids listening to their parents because it's a safety thing. And I take that very serious as well, but how do you do that? Because you know, girls will be girls and boys will be boys. It's like that forbidden fruit. You tell them don't go on that pond and guess what'll happen? I'm one of the ones back when I was, long before I was a teenager, did that very, uh, very thing at the risk of getting it when I got home too. But you know, that is just the reality of it. And, but uh, you know, if we can eliminate as much of that as we possibly can, count me in that's for sure. So, uh, Councillor Tesser Dirksen, did I see your hand go up and say you were one of those that did that as well? No, no, Mr. Mayor, I was not, but I do have children that do that. So I was just <laughs> gonna comment that we had a discussion just about this very issue in our house last night. We have our youngest who plays hockey and is sorely missing it. So uh, there's some discussions we had to have around safety. But on that note, um, I, I did wanna ask the Commissioner of Community Services about uh, the potential for artificial ice surfaces. I know it's very costly, but is that something that uh, staff have ever turned their minds to? Christine? Uh, through you, Your Worship, um, it's certainly something I have experience in in other municipalities. Um, if I want to use the example of Gage Park, for example, in Brampton, um, very, very well utilized ice surface. Um, the cost back when I was there, and actually Doug Sampano actually ran that, coincidentally, was about three to $400,000 per season for staffing and, and, and maintenance. So just to help put something in perspective for, for the public and members of council, but certainly as part of the report that will come back, as I mentioned, either in late Q2 or early Q3, um, there are some products, for instance, um, City of Burlington's using a product called Glyce, um, supposed to be a little bit more maintenance friendly, but we're gonna do some investigation there. There's obviously the community rink program. And I know a number of councillors have mentioned obviously refrigerated ice surfaces as part of the potential civic precinct project. So certainly we could just lay out just some high level, you know, costs, resource requirements, things like that, just so council can wrap their minds around that. And certainly we're happy to take direction. Councillor Tessa Dirksen, any further? Thanks for that. I, I mean, as uh, <laughs> the sticker shock is, is high, but I think uh, those types of surfaces would be extremely well utilized in our mm -hmm. community. Um, even if we do have our indoor rinks open, I think there's nothing that beats outdoor ice skating. So I appreciate the information. Thank you. Okay, are there any other uh, members of council, any uh, statements that uh, they would like to make at this point? I'm not seeing any, so that concludes that. I have a resolution moved by Councillor Chandler, second by Councillor Malbooth. Wrong resolution. <laughs> Uh, moved by Councillor Chandler and seconded by Councillor Cluett and be it resolved that bylaws number 006 uh, 2021 through and including 010 2021 be read, passed and numbered and that the mayor and the town clerk be authorized to sign the said bylaws, seal them with the seal of the corporation that they be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions with uh, the reading of these bylaws? Again, on the assumption, unless I see a hand go up in opposition, I will assume that these bylaws are carried. No hands going up, so those bylaws are carried. That, uh, members of council, does conclude our uh, agenda. Madam uh, Clerk, is there any other business that we have uh, not dealt with this evening? So with that, members of council and staff and to the public that participated this evening, this meeting of February 8th, 2021 is now adjourned. Thank you very much, staff, members of council. Good night. Good night, everybody. Stay safe.
Good night, guys.